there's this uh, there's this word. It's a phrase, really, that gets used a lot in both the church world and the online world. Blessed. It shows up in prayers of gratitude and in hashtags on social media. Blessed. And I often wonder, what does it mean to be blessed? When someone says they are blessed, what are they talking about? When what what does being blessed look like? Well, as I've heard people say it, and as I've seen on social media, being blessed most often looks like health, wealth, beauty, power, possessions, prosperity, privilege. And that's not actually far off from what people thought it meant to be blessed in Jesus's time. See, then being blessed meant that you were shown God's favor that you were close to God and God was close to you and that this was evident through the abundance and advantages in your life. Being blessed meant being in good health and fully able-bodied. It meant having lots of children were, who were also in good health and fully able-bodied. Being blessed meant owning land and livestock reaping a plentiful harvest. It meant showing your piety and holiness, maintaining cleanliness and purity. Being blessed meant having a good reputation and some measure of influence and authority. Just the same, one's poverty, failure, ill health or disability, and social status were often viewed as God's judgment against that person. Someone who is poor must have done something to offend God. A woman who could not bear children must be cursed in some way. A person with an illness or disability must have sinned and brought that upon themselves, or perhaps even their parents sinned. An impoverished and powerless person must be receiving punishment for their wrongs or the wrongs of their ancestors. This was a matter of conventional wisdom and accepted truth backed up by religious tradition and even scripture. So if health, wealth, success were all thought to be indisputable signs of God's favor, imagine the shock when Jesus proclaimed just who was blessed, just who was most favored and closest to God in the radical vision of the kingdom of heaven. Both Matthew and Luke tell us of Jesus' great sermon where he speaks this good news of God's radical love and expansive love. In Matthew, Jesus preaches these words on a mountainside, removed from the crowd. His message is a bit more spiritually minded, a bit abstract. But in Luke, Jesus has descended from his mountain retreat, and he is there in the midst of the longing, hurting, expectant crowd. His words are aimed directly. His message is God's grace incarnate, made flesh, made real, which probably made his message that much harder for some to hear and accept. Blessed are you who are poor? Surely that can't be right. You know, we know that their poverty is due to their own laziness and sin. Blessed are you who are hungry? How absurd. Any worthwhile person could earn enough to purchase food or farm food. Any caring parent would find food for their children. Blessed are you who are weeping and mourning. Don't they know that their loss is a pronouncement of judgment? Blessed are you who are hated, excluded, reviled, defamed. What blasphemy! Clearly, these people are impure, unclean, worthy of only persecution and shame. But what a liberating word that must have been for many in the crowd who gathered around Jesus. What a word that must have been for the exploited poor who faced imprisonment because they couldn't pay tax. What a word for the hungry who had not eaten, who could not feed their children. What a word it must have been for the ones whose bodies were frail and failing, deformed and diseased, the ones who were outcast, beaten up and beaten down. Blessed are you. Blessed are you just as you are, Jesus was saying. God sees you. God knows you. God is with you. 
Well, Jesus doesn't stop there with the blessings. He has a word for those who thought that their possessions and privilege was a sure and unchangeable sign that they were the ones most favored by God, a litany of condemnations and warnings. We don't hear this part as often, but woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. I wonder what the crowd's reaction was that day. I wonder if those who were rich and fed, the well-salaried and the well-caloried, I wonder if they felt like Jesus was calling out their selfishness and greed. Well, because he was. How about those who were blissful and perhaps blissfully ignorant because they had not endured hardships and suffering? Did they feel like Jesus was calling out their lack of empathy and compassion? Well, he was. And what of those in the crowd who were among the powerful and privileged, well-respected and well-regarded? Did they feel like Jesus was questioning their legitimacy and the injustice of their authority? Because he was. But why did Jesus, why did he go in on them like this? Was it not enough to simply lift up those who were suffering? I don't know for certain, but I have some thoughts and they relate to how we still think, how we still think of being blessed today. Quite simply, this message is a call to repentance. Because as I've witnessed it, claims of being blessed can carry this complex mix of performative humility tainted with a sense of superiority layered with implicit or explicit judgment. Claiming we are blessed because of good health and able bodies, material wealth and success, good reputations and respectability can have this odd effect where we might be Hum, we might humbly attribute our privileges to some benevolent outside force beyond our control, while at the same time laying blame on individuals for lacking these same things, as if everything is within their control, and they are somehow choosing not to attain power, privilege, or success. This kind of claim of blessedness prohibits us from any sense of empathy or compassion leading us to passive apathy or even how outright hostility. And it ignores, erases, and dismisses larger systemic and cultural realities that continue to persecute, exploit, repress, and oppress a great many people. This is what it looks like, friends. It looks like calling a person on public assistance, calling them lazy without acknowledging the absence of jobs that pay a living wage. It looks like blaming someone for their illness without acknowledging the lack of access to quality, affordable health care. It looks like demonizing and dehumanizing adults and children coming to our country seeking asylum from war-torn and violent countries, instead calling them invaders without acknowledging how decades of colonialism and U.S. military intervention and economic policy have contributed to and caused the horrific and desperate conditions that we cannot even imagine. It looks a lot like what Jesus came to upend and decry, and nothing like the kingdom of God that Jesus came to proclaim. So friends, if in hearing this, if you feel that you are blessed, if you say that you are blessed, I'm not suggesting you stop. I'm suggesting you pause. Perhaps your sense of being blessed is an expression of your gratitude a recognition of an advantage or privilege you might have that has not been afforded to others. Perhaps you recognize that, and you recognize that this is not something to take for granted, that our advantages and privileges can be changed in an instant. Don't stop giving gratitude for God, to God for these things, but also pause. Pause and consider what it means to you to be blessed. Pause and consider what it might mean for someone who does not have those things for which you feel blessed. 
and pause and consider who needs a word of blessing, just who needs to know that they are seen, known, and loved by God, favored by God. Pause and consider how what you consider to be your blessings might be a barrier to seeing the blessedness of others. Blessed are you who access food pantries and community meals. Blessed are you who come to our church doors strung out and seeking money. Blessed are you who are arrested for vagrancy or drug charges. Blessed are you who are profiled and detained. Blessed are you who are incarcerated and released into an unforgiving world. Blessed are you who cannot put down the bottle or the needle. Blessed are you who get dirty looks and shaking heads for how you dress. Blessed are you who must sell your body to make a living. Blessed are you who desperately want to flee violence but cannot find a way out. Blessed are you who just can't get well and can't go to the doctor. Blessed are you who are persecuted and demonized for your gender identity. Blessed are you who are persecuted for who you love. Blessed are you who are persecuted for the color of your skin. Blessed are you who are not sure you can hang on any longer. Blessed are you whose hearts are broken. Blessed are you whose hearts are broken open. Blessed are you. Amen. Amen.